Diddly, Bo Diddly, have you heard? That's Bo Diddley, of course, with Bo Diddley. Is that too repetitive? <laughs> An unforgettable favorite from 1962. Happy Friday, everybody. It is the lucky seventh day of November. Lucky especially since Dr. Gail Gross is about to join me on the telephone. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, Rex. How are you? Good. Uh, the holiday season coming, it's going to be stressful for most of us, isn't it? Well, it doesn't have to be, but it can be. <laughs> it's all in the way we look at things. You know, everything is attitude and perception. Understood. Uh, can you give us some pointers as to, uh, to to how to deal with the stress? Obviously, attitude is top of the list. Right, attitude. You know, we all say happy holidays, happy Thanksgiving, happy Christmas, and happy Hanukkah. And so we have a lot of expectation to be happy. And when we begin these ideas of what it is to be a part of a family and part of a holiday system, we often get carried away with these images that we see on television. In my day, it was Donna Reed. Today, it's Martha Stewart. And, you know, nobody really has the time anymore to go around, I know I don't, dipping my ribbons in chocolate and spending a fortune on decorations and and making everything look like a movie set. What really is important is not the externalizing of things, but the internalizing of things. So we really have to sit back before we have a holiday event like Thanksgiving coming up and plan, plan ahead as a family. And then you can all choose to be happy and not pressure your children to be perfect when relatives come over and and not put pressure on the children to be reflections of you, but rather let everyone just relax, surrender to the holiday, and remember what it's about, which is coming together, gratitude. And Thanksgiving is my particular uh, favorite holiday, but the idea of being thankful, really, for our family and our family coming together. And so you can do things together. You don't have to bankrupt yourself, don't have to spend a fortune. You can make, you know, gifts for one another. The main main thing to, to do is to plan ahead, to know what you are going to do as a family. And don't use the holidays as a time to ambush everybody and when relatives come over, go over old fights and old family problems and, and things that have no solution so that you find yourself uh, bringing up source points and fighting. The best thing to do is think ahead of who's coming and make uh, either call them ahead or make the decision in yourself not to address problems and not to create uh, take these opportunities of holiday and happy uh, to create problems of relationships. Really, everything is about relationship, and so surrender to trying to do better in the future than trying to resurrect the past. So leave the past in the past, in short. Leave the past, and don't use the holidays as a, a time to try to solve problems that have been festering for many years. Instead, just come together. If you have to say something, try to do better. We'll try to do better in the future. And let what was be. Just move forward. There are a lot of things that cause stress during the holidays. Travel is one of those, uh, not just from what might happen or what could happen in your travel, but uh, folks are are just scared of of things like Ebola and and flu and virus germs, and we're stressing. I bet you will agree too much about such things. Absolutely, you know, I I do believe in safety first. I do believe in planning ahead. That means have a plan A, have a plan B, have a plan C. If your family is traveling over the holidays and you're going to somewhere by by airplane or car, you have to really think if that airplane is canceled or delayed, what's my next plan? Sometimes you can drive rather than fly. Sometimes you can have a meeting place that's somewhere else if you can't get to where you're going. But if you have a plan, 
an A and a B and a C, then you're not totally flummoxed when something is wrong and doesn't work out. You don't have to get totally frustrated, which then takes that happy, happy and makes it stressful. And and also it's important not to rush around trying to create that perfect ambiance and spending a fortune. And, and you don't have to bankrupt yourself. You know, so many things that we do, we can do in a gentle way. We can have children organize plays and family gifts and, and special gifts for each member of the family. And this thing about e- Ebola, you know, that's a real problem. And it's very scary. And I I do also believe in Murphy's Law. You know, anything that can go wrong will. So it's important to have good hygiene, to teach your children good hygiene, to um, not go in places where you think you're you're you are in danger. I wouldn't take a trip to Africa over the holidays, for example, in the areas that are infected. There, it's just in many things of, of choice are common sense. Indeed, uh, common sense to to the point too. As you're talking about, don't stress over the decorations. Would that also extend to the to the Thanksgiving meal itself? You know, I I don't know if you remember this little song when I was young. They used to say, let your fingers do the walking through the yellow pages. And they used to sing it, you know, let your fingers do the walking through the yellow pages. Well, I'm, you know, I'm a working mother and I was a working mother. So for me, a lot of the things that I did had to do with ordering out. You know, I really wanted to be with my family. And so we may bake cakes or we may bake desserts we but we may bake turkey but a lot of the gift giving i got through catalogs and the cooking we did together and if we didn't have time to do all that cooking i would order something that was pre-cooked or partially cooked and then just do the final preparation together the whole key word in in, in relationship is being together and as long as you're even just setting a table together, making decorations together, you're not spending a lot of money, you're not spending a lot of time stressing, you're just being part of a family. And the family is really what's important. But if your your child is under stress the way you are, then you have to look for signs of stress so that you can address them early. And that means stress in yourself. You know, if you're stressed if you're overtired, if you're working too hard, if you're making the holidays like an obligation, then you have to compensate for that. Take a nice warm bath with candlelight. Treat yourself with a little gift of aromatherapy. With your children, recognize if their eating habits change, their sleeping habits change, if they're cranky. We get cranky and our children get t- cranky, and often it's not enough sleep. Make sure your children are getting enough rest. Look for regressive I agree. behavior in smaller children and aggressive behavior in older children. We truly do lead by example, don't we? You know, children take their cue from their parents, and they model from their parents everything. So the way we handle things is the way they handle things. And, it's, and, you know, one of the best things about holidays, I, I mentioned Thanksgiving, it's coming up first, is focusing on other people. You know, teaching your children how to activate that altruistic sense of compassion and goodwill, those random acts of kindness. And those activities can actually replace stress, reduce stress, and, and make them feel happy and warm all over, sort of like that little Girl Scout model, motto, do your best every day to help other people. And go. I, I would take our children to a soup kitchen and, and let them participate in helping others and serving food or to an animal shelter or bring clothing and warm clothing to shelters. Do uh, things that as a family, help other people volunteer. You know, it's the greatest way to lift the holiday blues. And and the reason we are um, vulnerable to holiday blues is because we have these high expectations of holidays for both ourselves and our children. This, This Donna Reed or Martha Stewart kind of holiday that we feeling that we should all 
be a certain way. But if we do these things, we lower our own sad feelings that things aren't perfect or that our families perhaps aren't as happy as we wish they were, would be. And we really elevate by doing for others our sense of self. It's the same with making really gifts. Not- Instead of buying everything all the time and being a very externalized, if we internalize and teach our children the intrinsic messages of goodwill and wanting to do things not because Santa is watching and going to and we have to be naughty or nice and he's keeping some kind of a book, but rather that interiorly we want to do something nice because we feel good about that, then you're teaching really something to your child. And there's really nothing like quality family time. Nothing replaces that. And if you don't concentrate on that and let that quality family time opportunity slip away, you never get it back. That's right. And what really, Rex, what is a life? Life is a series, a collection of memories. And at the end of the day, you're building memories with your children through the holiday celebration. So let your children put on plays, let them plan for the plays, let them practice and rehearse, and all the family can watch, sit around and sing, tell stories. Children love to hear elders tell about their childhoods and what their Thanksgivings were like and what their Christmases were like or Hanukkahs were like. So children love to hear the happy and fun experiences that make up their family history. So, you know, especially from their elders, Your children are really only wanting one thing, time with mom and dad. You know, no matter who they are, no matter whether they're disciplined problems or not, juvenile delinquents or not, teenagers or young, children all want really quality time with mom and dad. The memories you make with your children are really what life is about, and your relationships with others are the key to those memories. So I think the real key is to simplify. You know, teach your children that it's all inside, not outside. So simplify and manage their life, their holiday, in a personal way, and you'll really have a focus on what really counts, family, community, compassion, togetherness. You know, the holidays don't have to be a time of of stress. They don't have to be a time of great financial expenditure. You can make gifts with other people in mind. If Aunt Sally likes the color pink, you can draw her a pink gift or a pink picture or, you know, string, string together popcorn and make holiday decorations and make Christmas decorations. And so there's so many creative things we can do. But the most important thing is to surrender, to be gentle. You know, basically what we are teaching our children is that it, the relationship and, and time together is what counts not the external commercialism of the holidays. At the end, life is a free fall. We're all going to stand on top of that mountain, and we're all going to fall off. And actually, we're all going to hit. Nobody will get out of life alive. But the key to life is how we fall. Whether we grab upon uh, on the roots and the trees and the twigs along the way to break our fall and get bruised and beaten by the time we land, or if we just free fall and make it through without beating ourselves up and beating others up, the end result is going to be the same, but the fall is the way we fall is what's important. Good advice this morning from my guest, Dr. Gail Gross. Doctor, thanks so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me, Rex. I enjoyed it. Dr. Gail Gross, nationally recognized as a family and child development expert, author, and educator. Her uh, positive and uh, wonderful approach to different issues, as you've heard her speak this morning, helps families uh, navigate today's complex problems.